see ourselves as a family. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer for humanity. Words all across the world that every man, woman, boy, and girl will hear these words all across the world. And every man, woman, boy, and girl will hear these words all across the world. This is my prayer. This is my prayer for humanity. Good evening. We're so glad that you joined us this evening. You know, tonight we celebrate spiritual Holy Communion. It's a special time for our community, and we're so glad that you're joining us virtually to do this. Tonight it will be a spiritual commun communion without using the elements, but actually going within, going within and celebrating this communion within. We step behind closed doors and explore some of the mystical teachings of Jesus tonight as well. But before we begin, let's have prayer. I invite you, if you would, just to go within and feel that divine presence, that presence that is always there, is a living, uplifting, strengthening, healing presence. And tonight, we join our hearts with other unity ministries around the world we join our hearts tonight with Unity Worldwide Ministry, and we share a prayer with you that we have shared for the last few weeks. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties. And we affirm that all are safe and healthy and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. And we express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And so tonight we surrender again. We get out of the way and allow spirit to work through us, expressing as us. And we turn this entire experience tonight over to that whole spirit of God, that Holy Spirit within, and we are indeed grateful. Thank you, sweet spirit. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. <laughs> i 
Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Laurie. That was beautiful. At this time, I'd like to invite you to make a gift to Unity of Minneapolis, for we truly appreciate your support. And we have three different ways that you can donate to show your support for this ministry. If you're on the website, you can click on that donate button. If you have a cell phone, you can text Text GIVE TO UNITY to 77977. Again, that's GIVE TO UNITY, the number two, to 77977. And with both of those ways, you can give a one-time gift or it can be set up as a recurring gift, either way. Or you can write us a check and send it in the mail to Golden Valley. However you choose to give, we appreciate you, and I invite you to join us in this offertory blessing. So together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And then silently. Thank you. 
So let us recall the scene of the Lord's Supper from the scriptures. When Jesus and his disciples arrived at the upper room, they found the place ready, and the meal was already prepared. The disciples began to quarrel amongst themselves, eager to sit next to Jesus. And Jesus said to them, My friends, there are no chief seats at heaven's feast, except for him who takes the lowest seat. After all were seated and the first cup of wine shared, Jesus rose and took a basin of water and a towel and kneeling down, proceeded to wash and dry the feet of the disciples. Feet representing understanding. The symbology of washing the feet of the disciples represents the cleansing of the consciousness of false beliefs and opening it to the understanding of mystical lessons. He was endeavoring to teach them while also teaching them humility. Let us come to the spiritual banquet with open and receptive minds and hearts as the multitudes are fed in the desert place long ago we shall receive the living bread and the wine of everlasting life. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 20, we read, Behold, I stand before the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to them and eat with them and they with me. The door before which Christ stands is the door to our consciousness, our thinking and feeling nature. Consciousness is the cause of everything that happens in our individual lives. The supper with the indwelling Christ is known as the Lord's Supper or spiritual communion. We have not come together this evening by chance. The Spirit has drawn us here to enjoy the spiritual feast that has been prepared for us. The supper with the indwelling Christ is a mystical experience that takes place in the mind, in our minds, in union with divine mind and mentally appropriate or feast upon ideas. Through the mystical action of our mind, these ideas are transmuted and come into manifestation to satisfy our physical needs and desires. Thank you.
There is much that is beautiful and meaningful in the symbology of the Lord's Supper and much to be gained from the understanding of it. When Jesus realized his earthly ministry was drawing to a close, he gathered his disciples together in an upper room for a final meal and to impart to them this important, powerful, and mystical lesson. The upper room represents divine mind, the source of ideas. Jesus was first and foremost a great teacher, and he never missed an opportunity to instruct his disciples in the fundamentals of thinking and the fundamentals of living. So it is natural that in this final meal with his disciples, he used the simple symbols before him, bread and wine, to teach this important, powerful, and mystical lesson. In our celebration of the Lord's Supper, we, at times, such as tonight, do not use symbols as used by other churches. We feel that symbols have no value in themselves. The important thing is to grasp the meaning behind the symbols, concentrate on the reality that represent, and then discard the symbols. Jesus likened his body to bread and his blood to wine. Metaphysically speaking, bread represents divine substance, an invisible mind substance that envelops and permeates the universe and everything in it, and out of which every visible form is produced. Our body, food, clothes, homes, are all formed in substance. We live and move and have our being in divine substance, just as birds live in the air and fish live in the sea. In this spiritual substance is supply for every need that can exist, all sufficient and inexhaustible. Our lack of understanding of it results in limited conditions of lack and insufficiency and at times unhappiness. When money was needed to pay taxes, where did Jesus send Peter to find it? Jesus sent the big fisherman to the sea, saying, Go to the sea and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that coin, give it to them for you and me. The sea represents mind substance, which is teeming with ideas ready to come into visibility. The hook is a thought cast about in mind, and the fish is an idea that is needed to fulfill our physical needs. Fish represent the abundance of ideas everywhere present. When problems arise, Jesus tells us to go fishing in our minds for ideas to solve them, to take the first idea that comes to mind and to use it. Do not let the intellect get hold of it and begin to analyze and to reason, or you will never arrive at a satisfactory conclusion. An idea is a mental or spiritual pattern that humankind uses to mold substance. Ideas, in order to flourish, must have soil, soil that is free of cont contradictory or opposing thoughts. Our problem is not with the ideas, as Jesus brought forth in the parable of the sower, but with the soil, our consciousness. Remove the obstructions of fear and doubt and worry, and the idea takes root and grows into maturity. Not only must we appropriate ideas of divine mind, but we must also drink of the wine of spirit. Wine represents the dynamic 
idea of life, universal energy. Jesus says, Verily, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. John 6, 53. To eat the flesh and drink the blood is a figure of speech, which means to lay hold of divine ideas with words of truth and to bring them into manifestation that we may successfully live the life and fulfill our divinely appointed purpose or our mission in life. However, before we can appropriate divine ideas, we must make room in our consciousness by cleaning our mind and heart of negative and unchristlike thoughts and emotions, such as criticism, resentment, fear, selfishness, prejudice, and unforgiveness. For Christ cannot enter and abide in an embittered, hardened, and unforgiving heart and mind. We must forgive and forget the shortcomings of ourselves and the shortcomings of others. We must forgive.
Let each of us, in the privacy of our own soul, examine ourselves and see if we are harboring any false state of mind and heart. Let us do this self-examination and let us pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a Christ-like spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a Christ-like spirit within me. This is our prayer as we rest for a moment in the stillness and in the quiet. Out of the quiet and out of the stillness, we hear the promise of God. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be like snow. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be like snow. And in preparation for Communion, let us sing together, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Continuing a few moments longer in this consciousness of love, this consciousness of acceptance that has been established here, I invite you to join me in meditation. Relax. Take a deep breath. Close your physical eyes. And with the inner eye, visualize ourselves gathered around the table of Holy Communion and the mystical presence of Jesus Christ, our divine host, presiding in our midst. Let us see him 
take the bread. Bless it and break it, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And let us reach out mentally and take into our consciousness those divine ideas that will bountifully supply our every need spiritually and mentally, emotionally, physically, and silently affirm through faith, I now partake of the bread of life and I am now filled with radiant ideas. Through faith, I now partake of the bread of life. And let us lift up our inner eye again and see Jesus lift the cup saying, this is my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it and let us reach out mentally and drink in the life and the energy of spirit and silently affirm, I now partake of the spiritual life of the Christ and my mind and heart are renewed, restored, revitalized. I now partake of the spiritual life of the Christ and my mind and heart are renewed, restored, and revitalized. And now let us slowly and reverently sing the Lord's Prayer. remaining closed allow the vast silence of spirit to enfold and embrace you and find rest in your soul there is something within us all that longs for the glorious experience of the still 
in the silent presence. As the heart pants for the water, so pants our soul for the higher self. Breathe deeply. Slowly relax. This is the moment of mystical and psychological Passover from the lower states or planes of consciousness to higher ones, from sense to spirit, from lack to fulfillment. You have been with the giver of gifts, and his grace is upon you. All things are made new. Now let us pray. Father, Mother, God, in you, we lift our hearts in a prayer of gratitude for these moments of communion with thee, for the peace that is ours, and for the many gifts that we have received this evening. We are grateful for the bountiful substance and rich ideas constantly coming forth to meet our every need. We give thanks for the life that flows through our bodies, redeeming them from disease and regenerating them. Thank you for the joy and the contentment that fills our minds and hearts. And as we partake of our physical food, may we always remember you, Spirit, the mighty, inexhaustible source of all good. And we give thanks that thine is the kingdom in us, thine is the power in us, thine is the glory in us. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Join me in a closing prayer. 
As we bring this Maundy Thursday service to a close, we do it with a feeling of gratitude. Gratitude that comes deep from our hearts. Gratitude for the technology that allows us to come together. Gratitude for this community, for the ability to stay connected. Gratitude that we can reach out to the world, the world that surrounds us with a blessing, with a prayer. And we extend that blessing out to the cities, to the countries in which we live, and we share love. And in the name and with the power of the Christ within, we say, Amen.
at 7 o'clock, we have the seven last words. At 7 o'clock, it's one of my favorite services ever in my whole lifetime. We hope to see you then. Of course, Easter Sunday morning at 9.30, uh, we'll be here streaming as well. Thanks for being with us tonight. Be well, and uh, yeah, have a lovely rest of your evening. See you soon. Thank you.